my brothers and sisters. Welcome again to Sharing Heart to Heart with Pastor Gabriel McCurtis. Sharing Heart to Heart is a ministry of the Unity Christian Fellowship Church of God in Christ. We are a church that believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Come on. One more time. Who? Got the son. We believe in one God manifested in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. What do we believe in now? I believe in God. It's good that we have the faith in Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Oh, thank you so much for joining us today. Remember, I'm doing triple duty today. I'm ministering to you. I'm doing the music, and I have some technology over here, so if I look down, uh, just please forgive me for looking down, but sometimes I must look away. Thank God again for the team that I have on my side. I have my wife, Deborah McCurtis, my wife of 43 years, or nearly 43 years, my daughter, Jennifer McCurtis, my daughter of 35 years, and uh, we just thank God for the team that's helping to put on this show. During this coronavirus, I know that many of you have questions. You're wondering, what's going on? Why did God allow this? There are people that think that the coronavirus is like Armageddon. I said, this isn't Armageddon. We're not in the tribulations. This is not the Armageddon. We're going through a trial. That's what we're going through. And we have to keep our eyes on Jesus. I want you to turn with me. Today our lesson is lessons learned from your wilderness experiences. I didn't say experience. Experiences. We're going to be in Luke 4, 1 through 14. And I will take you to other scriptures but we're going to learn about the wilderness. It says now, then Jesus, this is Luke 4, 1. Then Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Being tempted for 40 days by the devil, and in those days he ate nothing. And afterwards, when they had ended, he was hungry. Talking about lessons learned from your wilderness experiences. Let's look at this for a moment. I need you to go back with me to Luke chapter 3, I believe. Verse 21, it says, now this is right before Jesus was led to the wilderness. It says, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized. And while he prayed, the heavens was open, and the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like the dove upon him, like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, You are my beloved son. You, he says, uh, you are my beloved son. He said, and I am well pleased. Now notice, God was pleased with his son, Jesus. But something happened. It said he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Led. All right, my brothers and sisters. Welcome again to Sharing Heart to Heart with Pastor Gabriel McCurtis. 
Sharing Heart to Heart is a ministry of the Unity Christian Fellowship Church of God in Christ. We are a church that believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Come on. One more time. Who? Got the son. We believe in one God manifested in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. What do we believe in now? I believe in God. It's good that we have the faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Oh, thank you so much for joining us today. Remember, I'm doing triple duty today. I'm ministering to you. I'm doing the music, and I have some technology over here. So if I look down, uh, just please forgive me for looking down, but sometimes I must look away. Thank God again for the team that I have on my side, I have my wife, Deborah McCurtis, my wife of 43 years, or nearly 43 years, my daughter, Jennifer McCurtis, my daughter of 35 years, and uh, we just thank God for the team that's helping to put on this show. During this coronavirus, I know that many of you have questions, You're wondering what's going on? Why did God allow this? There are people that think that the coronavirus is like Armageddon. I said, this isn't Armageddon. We're not in the tribulations. This is not the Armageddon. We're going through a trial. That's what we're going through. And we have to keep our eyes on Jesus. I want you to turn with me. Today our lesson is lessons learned from your wilderness experiences. I didn't say experience. Experiences. We're going to be in Luke 4, 1 through 14, and I will take you to other scriptures, but we're going to learn about the wilderness. It says now, then Jesus, this is Luke 4, 1, then Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Being tempted for 40 days by the devil, and in those days he ate nothing. And afterwards, when they had ended, he was hungry. Talking about lessons learned from your wilderness experiences. Let's look at this for a moment. I need you to go back with me to Luke chapter 3, I believe. Verse 21, it says, now this is right before Jesus was led to the wilderness. It says, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized. And while he prayed, the heavens was open and the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like the dove upon him, like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, which said, you are my beloved son. You, he says, uh, you are my beloved son. He said, and I am well pleased. Now notice, God was pleased with his son, Jesus. But something happened. It said, he was led by the spirit into the wilderness. Led. Didn't say he was pushed. He was jerked. He was led. It was a submission that he submissively went. Notice here, sometimes we feel that if the Holy Spirit leads us, it's always is that he leads us beside the still water, Psalms 23 and 2. That's not always the case. But this is not necessarily true. He led Jesus into the wilderness for a long and difficult time of testing. 
and he may also lead us into difficult situations. When facing trials, first make sure that you didn't bring these trials upon you. Now, if you went out and did something wrong, ran your mouth, stole something, and you ended up in jail, you're not being persecuted for righteousness sake. You're being dealt with because of what you brought upon yourself. But there are times that we face challenges, not from our unwise decisions, but we're facing challenges because the Spirit allows those challenges to come. Now, why was it necessary for Jesus to be tempted? First, temptation is part of our human experience. For Jesus to be fully human, for him to understand the, uh, us completely, he had to face temptations. Now, Hebrew uh, 4.15 lets us know that he is a God and he's a high priest that has been tempted in all manner of sin as we are tempted, yet we find Jesus did it without sin. So, so uh, Jesus also had to undo the work that Adam did. When Adam sinned, Jesus had to go through, but Jesus came forth sinless, okay? And so Jesus, by contrast, resisted the devil. James 4 and 7 says this, Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. I'm, I'm, I'm just getting into the setting of Jesus going into the wilderness. Well, what is the wilderness? It's a desert. It's a deserted place. It's something that you have to go through by yourself. Notice, God took Jesus from family, from friends, from loved ones, from comforts, and he took him to a place of where he was destitute, isolated. The Bible lets us know during the period that he was there, it was 40 days and 40 nights, he, had, he did not come there with a full belly. In other words, he, when he came through this experience, he hungered. Now, hungered is a little bit more than what you think. In other words, he was at the point where his body was entering into starvation. Now, I bet you, I can almost guarantee you, Jesus came out of the wilderness a few pounds lighter than he went in. So, let's talk about this. So, the wilderness, the wilderness, the wilderness experience. Now, let's go to a scripture about Jesus. We're going to go to Philippians 2 and 5, and then we're going to go back to where we were in uh, Luke. Philippians 2 and 5 says this, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I have to forget, all of you guys are not have not been in the church all, all the time. So Philippians is in the New Testament. You start the New Testament starts in Matthews. It ends in Revelation. So Philippians is sort of in between. If you can find 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, then you'll find Philippians. So it said, let this mind be in you, Philippians 2 and 5, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of man and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Now notice this, the incarnation was the act of the pre-existent son of God voluntarily assuming a human body and human nature. When I told you I believe in Jesus, I believe in God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, Jesus is the second person of the Godhead. Fully God on this earth. Fully God. He had all the power of God, but he willingly, when he came to the earth, he did not depend on all of his heavenly powers. So, without ceasing to be God, he became a human being, 
the man called Jesus, he did not give up his deity to become a human, but set aside the right to his glory and power in submission to the Father's will, Christ limited his power and knowledge. Jesus of Nazareth was subject to place, just like we are, time, and many other human limitations. So this, uh, what made his humanity unique was his freedom from sin. In the uh, full humanity, Jesus showed us everything about God's character that can be conveyed in human terms. So God the Son willingly set aside for a season. He didn't operate in his fullest divinity. Well, let's talk about this. You said, well, uh, 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 how do you understand this? When they came to crucify Jesus, <laughs> he tells us the Bible that he could have called in his divinity, he could have called a legion of angels. At that point, he really didn't need angels. Peter was slashing and that, knifing and cutting and, and switching. He, he, thank God that he, he didn't cut the man's head off, but he trimmed the man's ear right off his head. And he told Peter, put your sword up, Peter. Mm -mm. This isn't about brute strength. All I have to, I, all he had to do when they came after him, they said, we're looking for Jesus. He said, I am he. And they all fell back as dead men. Now, that shows you his power. He said, I could call down minimally a legion of angels that would wipe these peoples out. But because for the glory of God, for the mission that was set before him, he endured the cross and despised the shame. So he wasn't placed in the wilderness because he was a sinful man. He was placed in the wilderness so that he could learn some things. And the devil said to him, so when he was hungry and all this time stuff, the devil entered, said to him, if you are the son of God, command these stones to be become bread. Now, a lot of people think that Satan was trying to make Jesus doubt himself. That is not what was going on. So if you become, if you are the son of God, isn't he saying is, are you the son of God or not? I could say, if you be the son of God, since you are the son of God, wasn't no doubt in Satan's mind, wasn't no doubt in Jesus' mind who he was. Since you are the son of God, he said, command this stone to become bread. That was a temptation. Notice what Jesus said. But Jesus answered him saying, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delve down in this a little bit. Then the devil took him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in one moment of time. And the devil said to him, all this authority I will give you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me and I give it to whomever I wish, therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. Now, a lot of folks would have get to arguing, oh, Satan didn't own anything. Oh, this, the, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And we start quoting scriptures. You notice Jesus never, never told him that he was not the one that could not give him these things because he could give them them things. When Adam sinned, there was something that was lost. Now, Jesus had to go to the cross now to pay the price for what Adam did and reconcile us back to God. Now notice this. He said, so worship me. And Jesus said to him, get behind me, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Wow, wow. I'll, I'll deal with it. I'll break this temptation down in a minute. He came at him a third time. Then he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God or since you're the son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you. You think Satan doesn't know scripture? Oh, Satan knows scripture. Where was Satan at? Where was Satan at in the beginning? He was with God. God created him. He was a created being of God. He knows who God is. He knows all of this stuff. 
but he sort of twists things. He said, uh, in their hands, you should, uh, uh, they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Jesus knew what he was telling him. And so Jesus answered and said, it has been said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Let's go back. I'm going to, I got a little commentary that I want to read to you. This is the testing of Jesus. So, the devil's temptations focused on three critical areas. Notice this. Physical needs and desires, <clears throat> possessions and power, and straight up pride. For, uh, but Jesus did not give in. Jesus was tempted in all points, yet without sin. Now, I had a talk with my granddaughter one day, and she told me, she says, Grandpa, why is life so hard? She's only 15. She'll be 16 next month if I'm not, or, or yes, July, she'll be 16. She said, Grandpa, as a young person, I've had it tough. Doesn't God care? Someone, someone said, and I had to answer her back. I said, I hear everything that you've gone through. And I said, it is when you go through temptations, it's not that God abandons you. I said, but it's in these temptations and these trials and these situations. When I say temptations, I'm saying tests. Tests. I said, that's when you're perfected. So I began to talk to my granddaughter a little bit. I said, let's talk a little bit about the test and why you must go through. I said, let's take a vase. Let's take a vase, a beautiful vase. I said, describe the vase. And so she said, Grandpa, it's a 16th century so-and-so. She's just giving me, uh, and it has diamonds on it, and it has rubies on it. And actually, I said, well, uh, how did it come about? She says, well, a king gave it to his daughter, a princess, and that was her gift. And it's worth, and she told me the amount of money, she was just using her imagination. I said, how do you think the vase arrived? Do you think it just arrived as an expensive vase? I said, let's go back and let's go through the process. Where did it start? I had to take her to the potter's wheel, a messy, an ugly looking glob of clay was taken and in this uh, potter's hands, his hands is full of clay and they're dirty and this um, wheel, the spinner wheel begins to wheel, the potter's wheel, wheel uh, begins to turn and turn and that potter begins to shape that clay. That's also what the wilderness does. And I said, what happens when the potter finds a defect in that clay. I said, what happened? She said, well, he might have to start over again. Sometimes he might have to throw that glob down and throw it away and pick him up another purse, a piece and put it back on. And I said, so it is shaped. And finally, the potter finds the shape that he likes. I said, then what's the next step? Well, she said, well, uh, it has a lot of water in it and it has other things. It needs to be dried out and it needs to be, it needs to go through the kiln to be heated. I said, so God uses what? Fire. So that fire begins to bring out things that's still within that shaped pot of clay, but it's getting things out. The fire is not there to destroy the pot but it's there to enhance its beauty, to make it tough, to make it hard, to make it durable. That's what the wilderness does, see? And, and I'm still talking about this, but don't count it strange when we go through these fiery trials. But the Bible tells us tribulations work with what? Patience, patience, experience, and experience hope. And through that, we're not gonna be brought to shame. It enhances us. So what are the next steps after the fire? She said, well, she didn't know. She said, well, they painted. They painted. I said, yes, they painted. 
And I said, and, and then, then she said, they, 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 they put these, um, uh, they put these uh, jewels on it, and then it's ready for display. I said, no, 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 not quite yet. I said, after it's painted, I said, it has to have a coat. It has to be have that coat, that clear coat that goes over it, the glaze or whatever you call it, and then it has to go back in the fire. I said, what you finally see, what you were saying the, the king gave his daughter, is the finished work of something that had to go through tough times, the, try, the wilderness, the heat, the stuff, drawing out that junk. I said, and then you see the beauty at the end. Likewise, the wilderness. Likewise, the wilderness. We are brought to a point where sometimes things go so, they get so tough, we want to quit. We want to fall out, but I'm going to tell you to hold on. We are in the coronavirus. Some of you cannot pay your rent. Some of you cannot pay your bills. Some of you have business owners. You've lost money. Some of you have lost your jobs, but it's through the fire. It's through the experience that we learn something. America will come back. That, uh, that song, the Star Spangled Banner, Oh Say Can You See, by the dawn's early light, you know, and it talked about this, but it talked about that flag was still, after all the bumming and everything, that flag stood, it endured. And that's what the wilderness does. It brings about endurance for you. I gotta look at my clock to just make sure pastor's not going over. So let's keep Let's keep going, learning a little bit more about the wilderness. Now, the Bible says in 1 Peter 5 and 10, it says, But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory, by Jesus Christ, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, and strengthen, and settle you. Now, what does that mean after you have suffered work for a while? When we are suffering, we often feel as though our pain will never end. <clears throat> Peter gives us these faithful, he, he gives us a broader perspective. In comparison with eternity, their suffering would last only a while. Some of Peter's readers would be strengthened and delivered in their own lifetime, while others would not experience the freedom from suffering until after their death. Now, I wanted to keep reading now. If you go back to Luke 4, we stopped at 13. Uh, we stopped at actually 11. Let's go to 12. Jesus answered and said to him, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Now, notice this, 13. Now, when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an appointed time. When he leaves, he will return. If he returns, God allows him to return for our perfection. But notice this. Verse 14. Some of you have never read this. It says, then Jesus, after he went through the suffering and trials of the wilderness, after he was hungry, after he was alone, after he felt destitute, it says, Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of him went out throughout all the surrounding regions, and he taught in their synagogue, being glorified by all. There is a crown at the end of the completion of your wilderness. Now, Paul says, I fought a good fight. He didn't just say I fought and I lost. He said, I kept the faith. I finished my course. He said, now there's a crown laid up for me and those also that fight the good fight. There's a crown of righteousness laid up for you in heaven if you endure. Be not weary in well-doing for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. So now, 
here's the point that I'm making and we're going to be praying in just a moment and as you know as I said many times pastor has to do two things at once so I got to go and find my song but I asked yourself a question I asked yourself a question if God has allowed you to go through then my question to you is why are you fretting why are you afraid why are you complaining is there something that we need to know that only that God can do through our suffering and through the things that we go through I'm asking you this I'm asking you this because there's a reason there's a reason I want you to understand let's understand the full counsel of God in this matter if we endure to the end there is a crown I hope that my player is still working the song says abide with me I'm going to ask you a question are you in the midst of a storm? Has this corona virus gotten to you? I heard that the suicide rate has gone up. Domestic violence is also up. There's depression. People have lost their businesses. It may have impact you. But if you're trying to walk this thing out by yourself it's tough I recommend Jesus you said pastor what do you mean when you have Jesus in your heart leading and guiding you then the end of your wilderness experience is a promotion there's peace there's joy there's experience but it's only over here in the Holy Ghost if you do not know Jesus just repeat after me, God, I'm a sinner. Forgive me for my sins, wash me. I'm tired of doing this by myself. I get off the throne of my life and I'm asking you to get on. Seat yourself, Lord, I get up. After you wash me and cleanse me, I want to serve you. If you've said that in your mouth, if anyone that calls on the name of God shall be saved. The arms of God has opened. The angels are rejoicing in heaven. You've come into the kingdom for such a time as this. Other of my brothers and sisters said, well, Pastor, I'm already saved. I'm just struggling. Lord, I speak peace in the lives of these your children. You said you would never leave us nor forsake us. Let them know. Let them know with assurance that you're with them in this. <clears throat> in Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. We're getting ready to leave the show. Those of you that would like to contribute and learn more about this ministry, if you go to ucfcogic.org, you'd be able to learn a little bit more about our ministry, learn a little bit more about what we believe in, and God bless you. God bless you. And I see you in the future. And your future lo looks much brighter. It's time for me to leave this time. As I said, I'm talking and I'm uh, working through but I need to find my song I'm gonna leave on this I got a feeling that everything's gonna be all right thank you for joining us pastor loves you all of my unity family out there pastor loves you God bless you if you want to talk to me just hit me up on the email address unity kojic at msn.com god bless you god bless you god bless you i've got a feeling everything
Everything's gonna be alright, be alright.